part of that documentary that actually I'm, I'm glad is there that I didn't want there, but you know, I wasn't the producer and I gave all the rights to it. It's the only way to be fair with it. The producer, after I worked with a young woman, you may remember who was... Yeah, it was abused, the yeah, chronic abuse woman. But she was not only chronic America. abuse, she was in a cult where they abused her. Where yeah, as children, up. they were afforded to have sex. It was horrible. Yeah, so that blew you away. That, that was a really, you were really sort of moved by that. And I was sort of, when I saw the, the bit where you see you in the room and you've like got a little bit of downtime, it looked like that really blew you away. And that's yeah, I was crying, I was crying out of control. People don't see that in me. Because yeah. if I'm crying and they're helping her, which I did too a bit, but if I, I won't be able to help her. So I, it comes through me and then afterwards I let go and I feel the grace of that. And to me, that's often tears when it's uh, so beautiful, uh. when someone's life has been touched. And then I figure out what I did so I can do it again or teach someone else to so do it. So are you going to sage with that energy when you're like, uh, like, sort of feeling like, fuck it, no, that was a bit heavy. Like, don't, aren't you feeling so like, cause yes, I, like what I do for a living is not as intense. For a start, I'm a comedian and an entertainer. So I'm up there for an hour and a half, two hours. And like, I, all I've got to do is make them laugh. And I fucking love doing it. But afterwards, like I come home and I sort of crawl into bed and just like, you know, I'd want to be told, there, there, you're all right. You're a good boy. It's all cool. <laughs> That's what I need to be told. Like, you know, like sort of, is that like, if you got access to that level of vulnerability in yourself, or like, because yeah. it seems to me, this is my like, fuck me, like, I mean, what do I know? I've only seen a documentary and had a bit of a chat, but it seems to me that you were from very, very traumatic childhood and were not nourished in the way that you should be. So you had to turn yourself into your own nutritional source. Yes. And now you're trying to solve all of the world's problems. Well, not one individual at a time. I've been in rooms where there's 10,000 of them. <laughs> but, but like, uh, that's a lot of intensity because sort of actually, even though, you know, to prior in the earlier chat, you told me like that they put all that athletic monitoring equipment on you and said that you burned 11,000 calories in nine hours and your heart's doing this and your heart's doing that. Like, you know, I, I believe that in the ability of consciousness and will to alter anatomy and to alter material to a degree. But the simple fact is that ultimately that you're um, a man, where are you going with that vulnerability? What are you doing? Have you got like a mentor, someone that you can call? Yes, I have, I have many. I've, what's really beautiful in my life, uh, the grace of my life is I've been called to help others and they look at me as their coach, but it's, I'd be an idiot, the kind of people I have the privilege of coaching to think I'm just coaching them. I go there just like I did with you. I, I wanted to interview. I reached out to you. And fortunately, you wanted to chat with me too, which I was grateful for. But I wanted to reach you because I feel you have a very special voice when it comes to recovery that I have not seen anywhere else. You have a, a passion and a truth and a vulnerability. And I have a lot of that, but I'm only one person. So I'm good at finding brilliant people and then helping to pull out so other people can see, at least the people that I have an audience for. You know, I have 20 million people on social media and they talk to people. So hopefully it reaches even more. So I'm always on the hunt for human excellence. I'm on the hunt for someone who's real. My vulnerability is absolutely there, but I've trained myself like an athlete. Like the most common question I've been asked by the media my entire life that always makes me laugh is, well, don't you have bad days? Don't you have days when you're like frustrated and anxiety and pissed off and you watch TV and you eat Cheetos and watch pornography? And I said, well, I do some of those things. Right? <laughs> you know? And of course they do, but what I, it's like an athlete. I built muscle over the years so that it's not that I don't have feelings, I don't get hurt, I don't feel sad, I don't feel tired, I feel all those things, but they're not the dominant force in my life. It's a muscle. The mind is a muscle, emotion is a muscle. I mean, I think the most powerful muscles are the invisible force muscles. It's your spiritual emotional muscles. Like courage unused doesn't grow, it shrinks. So I put my ass on the line regularly so that it grows and when it keeps growing, then pretty soon the stuff that used to make me crazy, it doesn't touch me. It's not that I'm so great, just I'm well trained. I've trained <laughs> this mind. I get up every morning in my life, you talk about rebounder, more crazy shit I do is every morning in my life, if I'm near, if I'm near any of my homes and some places I have, I have cryotherapy, but my homes I have these cold plunges and they're 56 degrees and the first thing I do is jump in that cold plunge. So there's not a fucking morning where I want to jump in that. I can't remember morning, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to jump in that thing. But I don't negotiate with myself. I do it for two reasons. One, there's a physical health component. It moves your lymph system, every, the blood flushes through your whole body. But the main reason I do it even more than that is when I go up there, I don't, you know how people negotiate, well, maybe we'll do it tomorrow, maybe we'll do this, or oh, let me wait two more minutes till I'm ready. There's none of that shit with me. For decades, I go, I say we do. I'm not here to discuss this shit with my mind. There's mind, and then there's soul and spirit. And soul and spirit, my soul fucking knows. And when I say jump, you fucking jump. I'm not here to have a discussion with you. Now, does that happen with my water every day? Yes, because I've conditioned it. Does it happen every year of my life? No, and when I find it's not working, and I step back up and condition it. 
And unless I'm willing to take 100% responsibility for what I feel and what I experience, then I'm always gonna be a victim to someone because there's always gonna be somebody upset in the world we live in today about something you said or did or didn't say or didn't do or go. There is no victory in the world where everyone has a voice and not everybody's voice is necessarily designed to make somebody feel loved. It's designed to meet whatever their needs are in that moment. They might want certainty and you're being a certain way makes them uncertain or they think you're significant. You may think they're totally significant, but they don't, so they're mad. So I can't live my life that way. So I live my life where I keep learning, I keep growing, I keep loving, I keep laughing, and I'm trying to leave a decent legacy of a meaningful life by constantly looking for ways I can be helpful. And my prayer, my simple prayer, before I walk out on every stage is use me. Use me, Lord. And, and when you do that, it's like, if you get out of the way, my greatest gift is getting out of the way. I know that sounds silly to some people, but it's really true. I'm not an ultra-religious person, but I'm extremely spiritual, and I believe the force of life comes through me, it comes through you, it comes through all of us. And the only thing gets in the way is all the beliefs we have about how it's supposed to be, all the expectations we have, and I have them too but I, I keep weeding them out. So I'm not, I don't want to give you the impression that I'm, uh, I don't have challenges of that nature, but I have a hell of a lot fewer. It takes a lot more. When something happens like this happened, I go, oh, we're the opponent. Because in every story of a person's life, they have what they want and desire, and then they have these needs that they're unaware of. You know, character things that need to be developed. And how do those get developed? Well, if what you wanted, you just took action and it happened, you, A, you'd be bored, B, you'd never develop spiritually or your character. And so. What happens is opponents show up. And the opponent can be you with yourself. The opponent can be somebody close to you that feels like an opponent. It could be an external force. But if you do battle with this, eventually you battle with yourself. Because if you can solve it within yourself, you can, regardless of what happens in the outside world, you can have that sense that your life is meaningful. And so I've done battle for 58 years, and I'm gonna keep doing battle for the rest of my life, but I'm, I'm doing better because I've done battle so often. It's like, why is LeBron James who he is? It's not because he's lucky. You know, everybody say, you know, he's lucky. Shit, he may have certain physical tokens. Or Michael Jordan, I remember I interviewed him years ago. And I said, what makes you the best in the world? Is it skill? Is it talent? Is it ability? Is it background? Is it training? And he was so awesome. He said, Tony, I can tell you the truth and it won't sound like hyperbole or false modesty. He said, I didn't even make the high school basketball team my sophomore year. I was cut. He said, what it is is every day I demand more for myself than anybody else could possibly expect. I don't compete with other people. I compete with what I'm capable of. And it's just like, that kind of standard is inspiring. This reminds me, like, I had this conversation with Tom Cruise, right? Who's oh, like yeah. another American sort of great square jawed superstar. And like he was sort of saying about how he made his success himself. But I goes, no, but you were born with the Tom Cruise shit. Like you had that, even the will, that, like the will, you know, there's not the, you where, might does, as well where do you think will comes from? Where did your will come from? I don't know. Where do you think it comes from? I think that would be better. There's something you have to push against or you don't develop it. How do you build a muscle? You don't build muscle because you were born with it. We're all born with muscle, but if it's developed, you trained it. And that means you had to find something that you valued more than your pain. You had to get beyond your pain or you had to use your pain and say, I'm gonna use it to become more. That's what my life's been about. And now it's no longer driven by pain, it's driven by the joy of seeing people lit up.